What's going on guys and welcome back to another video and welcome to your stimulus package update, debt ceiling increase update and daily news report for Thursday, October 7th. We have some big news out today and tomorrow is actually going to be a huge day as well. Today, the unemployment claims came out from last week. Well, that came in better than expected. So many people are saying that tomorrow when we receive the September jobs report, that's going to be huge. And this is exactly what lawmakers are looking into. We know Senator Joe Manchin, he has new demands for the Progressive Caucus. The progressives are furious over what these demands are, but I'll address that in just a minute. Democrats are considering ending or doing a filibuster reform once again because right now Mitch McConnell has given them another option. However, if this additional option doesn't pan out, doesn't play through, then they have another option to fall back on. Right now, the two leaders in the Senate, Senator Schumer and Senator Mitch McConnell, are actually meeting to exchange paperwork on the specifics of the debt ceiling. So that's really good news right there. And Pfizer is going to seek FDA approval for the vaccine for children ages 5 to 11. So that's what we're going to discuss in today's video. First off, hopefully you're having a great day. If you could and you enjoy these daily uploads, do me a favor, go ahead and hit that like button. It really does help out the channel. Now, tomorrow will be a big day. Last week, we saw the new unemployment claims come in 38,000 below what they were. That is at 326,000. That's actually really good. This is a major shift. What we know is that economists were predicting the number would be right around uh, 348,000 people. So that was a pretty substantial gap of about 22,000 people that uh, in addition to what they were thinking. So that's good news there. However, here's where things could get somewhat complicated. Tomorrow is when the September jobs report comes out. This will be big. Now, I will come back on tomorrow morning, provide you an update on everything that's happening and what we're seeing, but here's what is expected. Lawmakers are looking at this September jobs report because, okay, here's the main reason. Remember, unemployment claim, the, uh, the unemployment uh, benefits from the federal government, pandemic unemployment assistance, the $300 per week, uh, all that stuff, that ended on September 6th for, what, 24 states. So that ended on September 6th. That means we pretty much had the entire month of September to see our jobs coming back. So that's what lawmakers are gonna look into. They want to know, did they make the right decision on not extending the federal government uh, uh, unemployment assistance? Or are jobs coming back? Things are looking better, right? That's what we wanna know. And in which sectors are jobs coming back? That's going to be a very important. That's going to be a, a telling sign as to how we are rebounding uh, as an economy. So I will be back on tomorrow morning to explain all of that as well. Now, Senator Joe Manchin, he has been a thorn in the side of progressives for quite some time. Well, the other day he told uh, Senator Sanders or an, and pretty much progressives that he does not want to support an, an entitlement society. And that is actually uh, making Bernie Sanders very upset. Bernie Sanders is fuming over this. He did a whole, uh, he did a whole like press conference yesterday pretty much just bashing Senator Joe Manchin and where he stands on these bills. So here's what Senator Joe Manchin had to say yesterday. He is now telling, this is according to, to Axios, and he's actually telling multiple progressives that he will not support all their priorities, and progressives have three main ones. They have three main ones. One's the child tax credit extension. We, we know Medicare is up there, but that's not one that's gonna be included. There's paid family leave, and the third one is child and infant care proposals. This can be subsidies for low and middle uh, income uh, families and also uh, two years for pre-K, right? So what Senator Joe Manchin is saying is that he doesn't want to support all three of these. These are all fairly expensive, all over $450 billion. However, Joe Manchin says pick one. Pick one and then forget the other two. That's what he's saying. So here's what could happen. 
It will either be the expanded uh, or extending the child tax credit payments. It will be paid medical leave for families or subsidies for child care. Here's what you need to know. Child care, the child tax credit payments for four years, it's going to come out to about $450 billion. If it's a $1.5 trillion bill, that means that a third of the bill, roughly a third, is going to go to the child tax credit payments, which is one of Progressive's priorities. Okay, All three of these priorities would go to the cap of $1.5 trillion. That's why Senator Joe Manchin says we can support one, not all three. We also know paid family leave. The White House, okay, the White House says it would cost $225 billion over 10 years. However, the House Ways and Means Committee says no, it would be about $500 billion over the same 10 years. So the White House is pretty much missing half of that. I don't know why. We also know in the child, the, the child and infant care proposals, uh, subsidies for low and mid middle income families for daycare, two years of universal pre-K, this is actually gonna cost about $450 billion. This is one of the ones that Senator Joe Manchin would prefer, okay? This is something that he does like this one. He, he likes the, the paid family leave. I don't think he's really uh, up for that one, however, he does like the child tax credit payments. He says that's a, that would be good, but the, the progressives need to pick. They need to pick, they need to decide which one would be the best, which one is the one they wanna move forward with. Now, progressives obviously don't wanna do this. Progressives, their plan is to just shorten the duration of these programs in order to make them cheaper. So instead of four years of the child tax credit payments, what if we just do two years? What if instead of uh, you know extending the the paid family leave for ten years, what if we do it for five years and we pretty much cut that in half, right? That's what we've been hearing from progressives, but right now it's it's really up in the air whether or not that works or not. But what I can tell you is that the reports the other day, even coming from uh, lawmakers themselves, that yes, uh, Senators Manchin and Cinema are on board with something over 1.5 trillion dollars. That actually isn't true. What Senator Joe Manchin said yesterday, and here's a quote from him directly, let me make it very clear. There's been a lot of speculation about what my number on a reconciliation. My number's been 1.5, I've been very clear. So he's saying his number is 1.5, that's his top line number. But just the other day, President Biden came out and said that we're getting close to a deal and now it's gonna be between 1.9 and 2.3 trillion dollars. Okay, well so President Biden is saying one thing, Joe Manchin is saying another, you got progressives fighting for their priorities, you got moderates pretty much staying quiet because Senator Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema are doing everything they can. So it makes it very difficult to try to figure out where are we going from here? But again, the good news is at least we're getting closer. Here's what I can tell you. Right now, there is a there's a plan to to uh, extend the debt ceiling, okay, or increase the debt ceiling limit for possibly two months, sometime in December. However, there will be a limit. There will be a cap. The number will be set. It might be thirty trillion dollars. We don't know, but it would pretty much fund the government for another couple months. Just kicking the can down the road, right? Here's the problem that if that falls through, Democrats really do not have another option because they've said we are not gonna use the reconciliation bill in order to increase the debt ceiling or suspend the debt limit. And if we go off the timeline from Nancy Pelosi, Nancy Pelosi wants to pass a $1.2 trillion bill by the end of this month, so in the next 24 days. Okay, great, sounds good. But what if she passes that bill? In order to pass that bill, progressives say, we need to pass the human infrastructure bill. This is the possibly 1.9 to $2.3 trillion bill. It used to be the $3.5 trillion stimulus package. Well, that's been cut. So that would have to pass first, then the $1.2 trillion bill, and then if both of those pass, the debt ceiling would be addressed sometime in November, possibly the early part of December. Okay, great. Well. If that's the case, Democrats would have used their reconciliation on the human infrastructure bill, so they don't have it anymore. So here's the problem. Right now, President Biden and Democrats 
are actually in serious discussions about changing the filibuster. This would be one of their last ditch efforts though. This would be if all else, all else fails, then we change the filibuster. And if that doesn't work for whatever reason, maybe Senator Manchin says, no, 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 we're not doing that. If that's the case, then it's gonna go to minting a $1 trillion coin. That's the steps that we're seeing right now. So right now, they don't wanna look into uh, really adjusting or, or modifying the filibuster yet. There's discussions, but again, this is gonna be one of those last ditch efforts. That's what we're hearing at this time. Also, this is actually pretty big news. This is something that a lot of people have been waiting for. A lot of uh, people are waiting to see that children five to 11 can get the COVID vaccine. Well, we've seen a lot of different reports on this, and finally Pfizer is going to seek FDA approval. Now, the, advisor the advisory committee is expected to meet on October 26th to see if they would approve this, uh, this new request. Now, if the request is approved, then shots could come out the beginning of November for children ages five to 11. One thing I just wanna reiterate, when it comes to the vaccines, uh, as far as school age children, California, okay, they're, they're, they're gonna try to mandate uh, all school age children get the vaccine, okay? So it's, and you can request uh, either, uh, you know, per, there's personal reason or, uh, you know, religious reasons why you cannot go and get the vaccine, but that will have to be approved. That's in California, okay? The reason why I bring this up is because when California does stuff, other states seem to follow. So, if there is an actual vaccine for children ages 5 to 11, okay, and we do get full FDA approval, not an emergency youth authorization, full FDA approval for the vaccine for children ages uh, 12 to 17, what you need to understand is yes, California is going to mandate every student gets the vaccine. Other states, okay, some states are considering this. Other states will put this into motion. So just keep in mind, if you are planning on this, maybe take some time, do your research, do all the, your due diligence and figure out if a vaccine is right for you or right for your children, okay? But this is something that we are gonna see coming. This is gonna happen. I don't know when, I don't know how many states are gonna do it, but I do know more are gonna do it and it will happen. So one thing I just wanna say is that yes, we are getting news regarding the uh, pretty much the stimulus package, what we're seeing there. Joe Manchin is setting his terms. We still haven't heard much from Senator Kirsten Sinema. However, she says President Biden and the White House, they know her position. They know where she stands. However, they have been very quiet as to where she stands because all of them say they have no clue. So we'll see what happens there. The debt ceiling increase or suspension, we're gonna have updates there. Again, we only have 11 days to get that pretty much agreed upon and passed, or else we will breach the debt ceiling, which would not be great. But the good news is, it seems like people are starting to work together. It always comes down to the last minute, but at least we're seeing some movement. So as we see movement, as we see some progress, I promise I'll come back on and fill you in on all the latest news and updates. Again, thank you guys for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Consider subscribing and I'll see you guys on the next one.